Okay, so the intention here was to set up a, uh, a single channeled patch containing some strings, uh, long shorts, uh, some long brass, timpani, uh, celeste, and some tubular bells that could be switched uh, while playing live just using simple um, sliders uh, and just using contact 5 as a standalone um, to save any problems of having to use a host or anything like that. Um, of course, Contact has lots and lots of sounds, and we've got lots and lots of plugins, and lots of options, and lots of effects. But um, here we've just got some very simple stuff. I've just loaded uh, some longs from Albion, uh, some shorts from Albion, some brass longs from Albion, um, uh, some timpani, a celesta, and tubular bells from the Contact factory library. Um, so what we've got at the end of the day is a very simple... Um, very simple patch. It's got uh, two controllers, two sliders on the keyboard. Um, one at the moment is set to uh, control change 2 and the other is set to control change 71. That just happens to be the two sliders I've got available on my, um, on my Phantom G8 here in front of me. But um, quite simply you can just play stuff uh, and depending on how hard you play you switch from having um, shorts and longs. You can use the uh, volume pedal the the CC1, which I've got set as my volume pedal because most libraries these days use a modulation wheel to control volume. Um, so I've got CC1 on a pedal, and if I just wiggle the pedal on the floor, you can see the modulation lever on the bottom there of the screen going up and down. Uh, that modulation lever, if you look into the Albion Orchestra, is controlling. There we are. It's controlling the volume, the dynamics of the uh, sustained strings. It isn't changing anything in the uh, the shorts here so we'll, we'll hide them away again we'll show them again so if i play nice and quietly with the volume lever turned right down here the dynamics turned down you get a nice uh, staccatos <laughs> so that's nice and simple uh push your pedal down to the floor and you end up with uh, the sustains coming through. You've still got the shorts, but if you hold your fingers, you get the full, or or full orchestra, the full string orchestra there. So you've got a choice. You can either have a, um, a fairly lightweight staccato section, or you can beef it up with some sustains. Gives you a little bit of sustain at the end, but of course it gives you the option then to do big, nice, uh, nice big dynamic chords. And of course, when you're playing your chords, because you're using the dynamic pedal to do your volume, you can play really quietly and still get the same, um, you know, MP and uh, PP and MF settings. So take it nice and quiet. So you've got good dynamic control over your strings. So let's just minimise those two strings. Um, we've then got the brasses. I just wanted some sustained brass to come in when I fancied it. Uh, and I've uh, programmed a slider. I could easily program another pedal to do this. But I've programmed a slider and I've uh, used um, control change number two, which is the uh, wind controller, but just so happens to be set up. And now I've got that set. So it controls, you can see here, Albium's quite a clever um, plug-in. You've actually got lots of little sliders you can fiddle with and assign to um, automation within Contact. I'm using the tree mics within the Albion Brass, and I'm just controlling the tree mic volume. So rather than control the dynamics, which are um, sat there doing nothing, I'm actually controlling the tree mic level. There are reasons for that, and it will become clear. There might be a bug in Albion. I'm not sure if it's a bug or not, but certainly if you disable CC1, which I've done here, you see there's no CC automation attached to dynamics. The, con the CC1 pedal still seems to control dynamics. I have written to the nice people at Spitfire Audio asking about this, and hopefully they'll come up with either a bug fix or a, uh, a reason why this happens, but we'll leave it at that at the moment, and we'll just say that we've got now a slider controlling um, both tree mic volumes on Albion here. So I can play a chord. And 
you can bring out the brass, you can bring in the brass. Of course, you could also replace them with some with some shorts as well. The great thing about having it set up this way and that you've got control over the tree mics is you've also, inadvertently because of that bug I said that might exist, you've also got control over dynamics. So when you've got your brass up full pelt uh, on the volume slider here, you've still, with the CC1 pedal, You've still got control over the volume um, or the expression of the brass, which is actually quite a nice way of doing it. So you can mix and match. You can mix your brass in nice and quiet, or you can mix it in nice and loud, which is quite nice. Something I'll mention later on, the way these are controlled, is you've got to make sure you don't assign a slider to bring the mic position down to zero, because um, what Albion does if you bring the mic level down to zero is it unloads the samples from memory and then has to reload them again when you slide the slider up. I mean, it's only 11 megabytes and 12 megabytes respectively for high and low brass, but still, you don't want to keep on um, having to muck up the memory like that. So we'll, we'll leave them as they are. So we've got brass and we've got strings and we've got these uh, nice little controllers that control the levels of brass and strings in our in our little um, arrangement here. So it's a very quick, easy way of doing it. Nice brass, nice strings for live performance. So the timpani. Timpani is very simple. The timpani is always there at the moment in this setup, and it's down in the bottom octave. I've been not playing that bottom octave during this demo so far, just to make sure that you didn't hear it. But here it is. There it is in the bottom, just a timpani, one octave, and that's there whether you've got brass there or not. So. So you've got a nice opportunity to put some brass in, make a big noise, and finish it off with some with some timpani on the bottom. So that's quite a nice way of doing it, uh, get rid of the brass. So that's the timpani, and the timpani are the factory timpani. Um, if you load up the factory timpani, they actually appear up here, um, between C2 and C5. All I've done is I've gone into the sample editor, the mapping editor here, within the uh, editing window of timpani deleted the top octave, uh, and then brought them down so they're between now C2 and uh, C1, which actually has an extension. Got B flat down there, so we've actually got an octave and a bit, which is quite a nice place to have timpani. And if you're using just a, uh, a six octave, uh, sorry, a 67 note keyboard or, or something like that, a 72 note keyboard, you've actually got them down the bottom octave. Of course, I'm using an 88 note here, so I've got an octave below that, uh, which aren't being used, but that's fine. You could, in theory, just... Uh, extend these samples down a further octave if you needed to um, just by selecting them as I'm doing here um, let's just select those and drag and drop them down to the bottom so now I've got timpani sustaining all the way down to the bottom there which is quite nice so in fact I'll leave them there for the moment and uh, leave the timpani as they are so the timpani are there all the way through this um, this performance now we've got uh, an optional extra. We've got these celeste and uh, tubular bells. I wanted to crossfade away from the kind of the string and brass orchestra into a nice little percussive section just to kind of play some some mellow bits. So this is where Control 71 comes in. And if you just look at the screen, look at these volume levels and look at these volume levels, you'll see that by default the celeste and the tubular bells are simply just volumed out. So whatever I play, you don't see any volume appearing on the Celeste. They are actually being played, they are occupying memory. Um, having said that, this whole project is only 153 megabytes, it's hardly going to break the bank, especially on a laptop. So that's no problem. Um, but if I slide up number 71, you see what's happening here on the screen. The volume of the Celeste and the tubular bells are going up, and the volume of the, all the others, the strings, the brass and the timpani, are going down. So now I've got a Celeste. on the top there, and then the bottom octave. Layered with a Celeste, I've got a tubular bell. Um, I left that layered just so I can demonstrate how you get rid of it. So we've got the tubular bell, we can click on here, and there's the tubular bell samples in that bottom octave, the red lines indicating here what I'm playing. And I want to get rid of the Celeste, because it sounds a bit, a bit church bell and less tubular bell. So I can go into the Celeste, click on the mapping editor, and here you can see the Celeste is occupying this sample space as well. So I can just select everything that's Celeste and just press delete on the keyboard. Now they've gone. I got Celeste at the top 
and two red bells at the bottom. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that as it is, edit it out. So now we can slide the slider back down again and we get our strings back. <laughs> And you've got your strings back. So it's a very simple performance. It's very simple to set up. So I've been waffling on for long enough now. So let's just quickly have a look and show how you set it up. Up in the uh, contact window, you've got the files, libraries, database, uh, monitor, modules, and auto. So if you click to auto, this is where you can set up automation. You'll see here on the left side every single control change from 0 through to 127. Most of them aren't assigned to anything. And if you load a few patches, things like Albion and things like that, where CC1 is assigned already to the um, dynamics, you'll see that listed up here, here, CC1, dynamics, Albion, violins, violins 2 and viola longs. It's already assigned. And if you click on that, down the bottom here, it tells you what it's, what it's assigned to. We've got dynamics, uh, instrument is Albion, don't worry about groups, and then that's uh, that's all the information we have. But down the bottom, this is the uh, the key thing, you've got from percentage to percentage. Okay, uh, let's go back to those Albion uh, violins and have a little look at that. So there we've got the dynamics, and if I wiggle the uh, modulation lever here, you can see it's going from 0 to 100. And that's because the longs 3 here, which is this uh, patch up the top here, move it up and down, it's going from 0 to 100. If I edited this and changed it to 50, now look at the slider up here. It goes from... It doesn't go from anywhere to anywhere. That's a strange one. It seems to have uh, mucked up their programming, so that's maybe not a, a great idea. It's back again. Okay, people at Albion have been clever, and you can see they've, uh, they've not allowed us to do that. So let's look at another one quickly. Um, let's look at CC2, um, which I've got selected to go to the brass. So let's load up the brass and just uh, see whether it... Uh, there we are. So here we've got the slider here. And I'm going to click on CC2. You see this little red lightning bolt? That's telling me what control change is currently moving. So if I move CC1, it flashes. Move CC2, this flashes. And I can just r grab a random slider on my uh, computer here, on my keyboard. Up and down, there we are. 76 is flashing away. So let's go back up to the top and wiggle number 2. There we are. Mic level 2, Albion horns long, and mic level 2, Albion horn long low. So let's go to the high ones. And you can see this is set from going from 1 to 100. Remember what I said about not wanting the percentage to go down to 0, but if I can set that to 50. Now my slider, if you look on this uh, longs, it goes from the top fully down. The slider is now saying 50. And if you look at the uh, longs, that's going from 0 to 100. And you can see, if you look at these two sliders as they move up and down, one's going from 100 to 1, the other's going from 50 to 100. It's that simple. You just assign it and off you go. So how are we assigning this? Let's put that back to 1 again. And let's wiggle that one we'd identified before, number 76. Let's say I want to assign number 76 to the outriggers. Grab 76, drag, and drop onto anything that has a controller. You can see here it's allowing me to drop it onto the direct mics, the tree mics, the um, ambient mics, and the outriggers. So I'm going to drop it onto the outriggers, and now this slider controls the outriggers. It's that simple. You can see it's on maximum now. And if I show it down to zero, look, it's just unloaded it. Memory's gone from 11 up to 23. So I want to change that. So I click on the mic 4. I look on Albion Brass Long's tuning, and I change this to go from 1. And now this new slider goes from... Oh, I'm sliding the wrong one. Which one am I sliding? There we are. That's now going from 1 to 100. And you can see it's not unloading it. It's keeping it loaded in memory. So... This is a very quick way of setting up, for instance, a, a kind of a draw bar organ type slider system to work with things like Albion. It's quite nice sometimes to be able to mix and match your mics on the fly, and you can program up your instruments on equal on different MIDI channels so that, for instance, the four sliders you've got on your controller control on all of the Albion instruments, these four. And that's incredibly simple to do, and you can just resave the single patches. So I'm just going to disable that. So you click on it and just go remove, and it's now not assigned anymore. I can slide that slider as much as I like and it's not working, so I'm just going to turn that one off. So I hope that makes sense. Um, it's a very simple system, and I've just got two uh, sliders, the uh, control change uh, two, which is bringing in brass. And then control change 71, in this case, which is doing this lovely crossfade between Celeste and Jupiter Bells. and the strings and timpani sections. So there we go.